Today we're going to be disassembling some Android APKs and looking for buried treasure. And of course by buried treasure I mean API keys and other secrets. I'm making this video for two reasons. The first is to bring some awareness on some good security practices for mobile applications. And the second is because I think it's interesting. And I think you'll think it's interesting too. So let's get started. So first we need an APK. I looked around for a little bit to find an APK that I thought was interesting. And the one that I settled on was a Pastebin application that says they are an unofficial client application for Pastebin. I picked this because I already knew Pastebin had a public API, so I was betting that in his application was going to be his API key. And the store page for that application is here. What a lot of people might not realize is there's tons of APK mirror sites out there that just take all the APKs from Google Play and they put them elsewhere so people can download. And finding this particular app isn't much more complicated than just typing in Pastebin, Create and View Paste, APK into Google, and it pops right up. The one I used was APK Center, but there was about 10 other options. And just as a side note, all of these websites all look super sketchy, but it doesn't matter. You click the download button, you get the APK. So now that that's done, I've moved that over to my temporary folder here, and you can see it, pzy64.pastebin.83.apk. Now the APK itself is nothing special. It's not encoded or encrypted or anything. You can actually just extract it just like any other archive. And, but the problem is the files that it produces is not really human readable. So what we need is a tool to take that non-human readable stuff and turn it into Java source code that we can understand. And that tool is called JADX, which claims to be a DEX to Java decompiler. And DEX refers to the classes.dex files that are present inside the APK. The use of this tool is really straightforward. All you have to do is type in the path for the JADX binary, and then supply the APK as the first argument and hit enter. It'll do some processing. Once it's all complete, a new folder will be available, which we can change directory into. And inside there will be two folders, resources and sources. At this point, we don't need our terminal anymore. We can switch to an editor so we can start doing searches in it. So now that I have my editor open, we can start looking for anything interesting. Now there's a bunch of folders here. There's a folder called pzy64, which matches the original package name. So I expanded that open. I found pastebin and then I found fragments. I found a bunch of Java files that kind of relate to what a pastebin application would do, like base activity, browser, download, login, main, and so on. Now the first thing to recognize about disassembling APKs is that this resulting source code is not necessarily what the author wrote. This is the decompiler's best attempt at taking the bytecode and translating it into source code. So rather than just aimlessly clicking around in files, the more efficient way is probably just to do project-wide searches for different keywords. And the first good keyword that pops into my mind is obviously pastebin.com. I apologize I couldn't zoom the screen in, but it did yield a bunch of results. A lot of them are just pastebin.com slash edit slash raw. But when I scroll down here, I get pastebin.com slash API slash API posts and also API raw.php. One of these is very likely the method that actually posts a new paste to pastebin.com. So we'll open the first one. Okay, so we found something interesting, but we're going to have to dig deeper. API dev key is very likely going to be the developer key for this guy who made this app. The problem is, is it doesn't actually say what this key is. It just says str, and this is just a string that passes an argument to this function called a. So maybe we do a search for API dev key and see if that yields anything. So this yields four things. It looks like the first three is the same as the first one we opened, uh, perhaps the exact same thing. However, the fourth one does give something interesting. So now rather than being an argument string, we actually know what that is. Login.this.getString r.string.devid. So this is 100% what we're looking for because we know from our Android knowledge that R is the master resources class and then string points to the strings.xml file in resources and then dev ID is going to be the key inside there. So all we got to do now is locate that in our resources section. So we got resources and then res and then we scroll down to values and then inside here is strings. Now all we have to do is a simple find command called dev underscore ID and it takes us right to it. So the treasure hunt's over, we found what we wanted, so now let's shift to why this is a bad idea. So if it's not already obvious, random people having your API key that is tied to your account is not a good thing. It means that anybody who possesses this key can do things as if they are you. Now the other problem this presents, and this isn't really a security issue, but it is an annoyance, is that if you ever have to change this key for some reason, like maybe you create a new account or something happens to this key, everybody that has your app already installed, it will just break because you have no way to update this key. If 50,000 people have your app installed, 50,000 people's apps are going to stop working because it's gonna be using the old key, which is inactive. So what should the author have done differently? Well, in my opinion, he should have created his own API with disposable keys. 
then of course his API would use his private API key to contact Pastebin directly. And this solves both problems. Because the keys are disposable, he doesn't have to worry about them, and he never has to expose his private pastebin.com API key. And at this point, we're pretty much done. Keep in mind that most app developers are already aware that people are able to do this, so you should not typically be able to find anything sensitive in people's apps. And also, it's not just about finding secrets. This is a good way to see what API endpoints applications are using just because maybe you're curious or you want to see where those domains are located. And sometimes this is the only way to find URLs because a lot of times apps will use TLS, which means that the connection going to their endpoints is encrypted and you can't actually know what that endpoint is anyways. Anyway, hopefully you found this disassembly and analysis interesting and that you learned something about app security along the way. If you have any questions or feedback about anything you saw in this video, please be sure to leave them below in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.